Transition has made me happy, and it's also changed the way I experience happiness. <laughs> and that's something that I never anticipated, and that's almost kind of scary. So something that I've been reflecting on is, is Bandcamp, actually. I swear this is going to get back to being transgender and the overall point of this video, but when I was in middle school and the start of high school, I would go to Bandcamp during the summer for one week. And I loved Bandcamp. I would spend so long anticipating Bandcamp and preparing my solos and my auditions and getting ready and getting hyped. I remember very vividly at Bandcamp, the first time I ever went, I was there with my sixth grade boyfriend, you know, very serious relationship. And it was housed at the local state university, and so we had free reign of the dining hall. And I was seated there across from him with a giant mound of shepherd's pie on my plate because no one had told me how much I could have. And I was like, this is happiness. This is amazing. This is so great. I'm free. I'm me. I feel part of something. I'm so excited to be here. And then it would just fly by, you know, that week that I'd spent so long preparing for and so long anticipating it would be gone in the blink of an eye, and we'd be there doing our final little concert, and then my parents would be picking me up, and I'd be moving out of the dorm rooms and back to my house in the suburbs of Maine, and back to the start of another school year. And you know, that's how happiness was for me for a really, really long time, is that I would have these isolated moments of feeling like this is it, and then I would spend a lot of other time waiting for those moments to happen, and, and building up anticipation for those moments. And now, I don't spend a lot of time waiting anymore. Like, I, anticipation and excitement, it's not as big of a part of the way I experience happiness. I just am happy most of the time. And it's super weird. Like, every day and every week of my life feels like those special moments from when I was younger. Like, every week is band camp now. <laughs> and, I mean, this is obviously amazing beyond my wildest dreams. And I think for me, a huge reason that I'm here and in this place of contentedness is because of transition. I think that transition allowed me to connect and be part of society in a way that gave me that sort of comfort to find joy and to find friends and to find the sort of adventures that I need to be happy. And I think that before, you know, it was those sort of isolated moments of feeling like a part of something that was where I got that from. And now it's just like all the pieces came into play. and and I love my job and I love my friends and I love my life so much that it's not like, I don't need a break from life to be happy. My life itself is what makes me happy, you know? And for me, that was transition. I think for other people it could be anything, you know? I know that there's a lot of people at various stages in their life who, you know, who aren't there yet. And so it's not that I think that every cisgender person is out there living life as happy as I feel I am. And I, in fact, I know that's not the case. And this is actually something that I think about all the time, right? Is people act like, you know, oh, transgender people are always suffering, and oh, you know, yeah, like, transgender people are suicidal, etc. I think transition allowed me to push to this place of happiness and reflect on what I wanted and needed, and to get through all the therapy, and to get through those hard conversations, and to think about my goals in life, to get to a place of happiness that most people, like, might not reach, at least not at my age, I think. Like, I feel really good for a 25-year-old. But, <laughs> it's also really scary, because Life is flying by. It's so weird. It's like I spent so much of my life trying to figure out like what was going to make me feel like me and what was going to make me feel happy. And then once I got there, now it's like it's just flying by. I remember like one year ago so, so vividly because so um, I was having to re-sign the lease on my apartment. And I wanted to move out, and then other people didn't, and this was like a hard conversation. Not worth getting into, but I remember very vividly in this discussion, I was like, one more year, like, that's just such a long amount of time. Like, one more year in this place, I don't want to do a whole nother year. And, oh my god, that year went by so quick. Like, I, I can't believe it. Like, we're, I'm in a, I mean, I'm about to not sign the lease and it's gonna happen, you know? And it's like, I'm reaching that point of like, wow, 2023 was, was like the quickest year of my entire life. And it was the happiest year in my entire life. I think that it makes me feel very, it makes me feel very nervous that I like, this like level of happiness that I'm experiencing. It's the first time in my life where I don't feel like ready and eager and excited about the next step. That's not to say that I'm, like, not excited or that I'm dreading it, but, like, I don't know. I think I never got, there was an emotion I never quite understood. You know, at graduations and at the ends of things, when people would be up there in tears, 
And I was like, so what, you know? <laughs> like, the idea of crying at my high school graduation was just the craziest idea in the entire world to me because I'm like, aren't we all excited to be going off to college? Like, I cannot imagine wanting to stay here for one more second, you know? And it's not that I had a bad time in high school, it just, like, wasn't a great time, you know? And same thing with college, like, I, I remember, like, I, I was class of 2020, so I was the COVID year. And there was this moment that we had where, you know, we went off to spring break, and then it was like, oh, we're never coming back from spring break. <laughs> and so many of my friends were, like, really crushed and devastated because our school, and I'm sure most schools, had a lot of sort of senior activities that were lined up of this big grand finale of, like, you've, you've worked towards this, you have all these sort of sentimental moments of, like, really live the final semester. And I was like, ah, whatever, you know, like, I don't have that much to be sentimental about, like, I'm excited for grad school, I'm excited for the next step, I'm ready for the next step, aren't we all ready to just like move on and get out of here? And sure, it's annoying that we all have to be on lockdown, but like, I didn't care that much about missing the sort of, the little frills <laughs> of the senior spring. And we had, you know, we had over Zoom these, you know, this grad these graduation ceremonies where people would give speeches, and I remember vividly people in my college giving giving speeches about how much the community meant to them and how much this time meant to them and how much they would miss the dining halls. And I was like, you guys are going to miss the dining halls? And, and I felt that, like, that really big feeling of disconnect about, like, why are people not ready to move on? And I also felt really jealous. Like, I, like, I wanted that sort of feeling of, like, I was a part of this and I'm sad to not be a part anymore, but I never, it never had clicked for me. And I, I was seated, seated there, like, in front of the laptop with my ex, and I was like, I, I remember saying to him something where I was like, I hope in grad school, finally, I'm going to make those connections and have those friends and will have those feelings that those people in their speeches on Zoom were expressing of, of how, um, yeah, uh, of, of, of how sad they were to be leaving that place. And then he was like, oh, if you'd really wanted that, if you really wanted that community and those friends and that, you know, being a part of it, you would have made it happen. And he sort of immediately took it back. But I was like, no, I, I do want it. It's just not happening for me. And I think for me, yeah, it was transition. Like, I was always living a little distanced from people because I, when I hadn't transitioned, I was never, like, really 100% me. And I think that me not having transitioned, I, I was doing that because I thought that would make me more palatable, like, in some sense. Like, I thought that having long blonde hair and being a feminine woman would make me worthy and likable and dateable and all that. And so that meant that, like, when I was interacting with people, there was always this distance between me and them. And it also meant that, like, I really, really cared if people liked me in a way that I think really hurt me actually having people like me, which is kind of ironic. And so then I, like, you know, you finally reach this place where, like, I transition and I'm like, yeah, I think I'm great. <laughs> And I'm not everyone's cup of tea, but, you know, I couldn't possibly hang out with every person in the world, so I can find the people that will like me, and that's gonna work. And then all of a sudden, it's like hanging out with people is just about the fact that I actually love people. Like, I'm not sitting there, you know, as I'm listening to my friend talk about, you know, what's the purpose of their work, and how did their most recent hinge date go, and as we're walking down to the CVS to pick up their prescription, I'm not like, oh my god, like, I'm so happy someone's willing to spend time with me. I'm just, like, loving it, because I love everything about being with people. And it, I used to always have that in the back of my mind. And now that I get to, like, just live and love every experience directly, because I'm so much more present in life now that I've transitioned, it's like time is just going by. I find it very, like, disturbing. <laughs> and obviously it's a second order disturbing, because obviously I would rather have this. But it's, like, weird. <laughs> and I, I think about how, like, it just feels like almost like I just, I never, ever, ever could have anticipated that this was even an option of existence. Like, <laughs> and if, if you told me that this was how it was going to be, oh my God, I would have transitioned earlier. I mean, like, I don't know. I'm happy I didn't. I'm happy that I, I think that like, that I think the timing, I think it was transition plus therapy plus a lot of reflection. It wasn't just transition, but like, geez, I did not know that this was the upper, I did not know this was the upper level. Like, and this is this is literally true so the you know i would say that there were these these nights that i would have like once a season when i was in high school or undergrad that were like you know perfect nights and it would be like you know i have all my high school friends over for a sleepover and we're eating gummy worms and doing prank calls and stay up till two and i'm like i love this or like you know 
<laughs> my friends and I have all drank a bunch of wine and we've gone to a formal and now we're ending the night, you know, eating Indian takeout. That kind of night, that, that would happen like once a season for me, you know, a handful of times a year. I, that happens one to two times a week for me now. Like it's, it's, it's like not even close. And it's not even like, like my brain hasn't numbed to it or anything. It's, it's not like I experience less joy now that it's happening more frequently. Like it just feels better all the time. Like life is just better all the time. And I did not know that life could like be honestly like 10 times better than what it was. And that like when you, like when I look at the photos on my phone, I, I, it's like all my photos are from the past few years. Like not just like photos of myself. It wasn't just about my appearance, but it's literally about like how I engage and interact with the world. It like is all post transition. Like it's, it's crazy. And it makes me think about this YouTube video I watched that is almost surely pseudoscience, but I like nevertheless connect with deeply that talked about how, you know, with the perception of the passage of time, if you spend time doing nothing at all, it feels in the moment like time is going by very slowly, right? So if you lock yourself in a room for an hour with nothing to do, that hour is going to feel like the longest hour of your life. But then when you're reflecting back on time, it's those, time, it's those moments in your life when you've packed in a bunch of experiences. That's the moments that feel like they took forever. And so that, like, that really is how I feel right now. It feels like my whole life I've transitioned. Like, I... I I, most of my memories are from having transitioned. Like, it feels like most of who I am and what's happened has been post. And so, on some dimension, the past three to four years feel very long because it feels like it's everything. It feels like my whole life has happened in that stretch of time. But the moment, experientially, is flying by me. Like, it feels like, the, it, feels like it just is going by so quickly. <laughs> and it's just, it's disturbing to have that switch happen so intensely like to have gone from life feeling like moving at like you know whatever 10 miles per hour to 50 miles per hour out of nowhere and it's just like it's like wow like i've never before wished that life could just go a little slower like i want to have all these moments and i want to have all these experiences but i just want it to keep going for a little longer like i i don't want to be graduating like i'm i i'm in my fourth year of my phd program and like grad school is not supposed to be fun being in the fourth year of your phd is not supposed to be fun no one has ever told me that it would be fun and yet i'm having the time of my life and i really do not want to graduate like i want to stay here forever and i mean don't tell my advisors that because obviously i don't and obviously i'm driven but like i'm having such a good time and i feel that about like the ways i interact with the world and my friends and everything like i i like right now i live in a four-bedroom apartment in like the tiniest little room you've ever seen i mean actually you've seen parts of it in my <laughs> in my videos but like it's a it's a it's like a dorm room si sized bedroom you know and i make i make a salary because i'm a graduate student um and so you make a salary for teaching because i'm a teaching assistant it's not a salary you could raise a family on but it is enough money to comfortably afford this room in the four-bedroom apartment to comfortably afford cooking and you know eating out and going on some vacation sometimes and I just love this life that I'm in of being like a, a 20 something, you know, like all my friends are in the same sort of like income bracket and life experience where we can afford the same set of things and where, you know, the night it's like we can all afford to go out, but none of us can afford to drink like five drinks at the bar. And so most of the night it's like a pregame where we bought, brought some 12 packs or something and we're seated around and watching Drag Race and then we're going to go to a bar and it's like, that's what life is right now. And I just don't want that to end ever, you know, and it's like. I don't know, it's like the joy of these house parties and of dinner parties and of game nights and I just, this way of connecting, I know it's not gonna stay that way forever. Like the ways that we're gonna connect as we get, go into our 30s and 40s and 50s, it's gonna look different. And I love this so much. <laughs> like I don't really want it to change. And I don't really feel ready for it to change. And it's weird too because I'm I'm really excited for the next steps. Like I, I mean there's things I planned immensely. It's like I'm going to be a professor or an economist, I'm gonna be doing academic economics research, which is always what I've wanted. And I'm gonna, you know, settle down and have kids. And I, I want all those things and I'm excited for all those things. And yet <laughs> I just like, for the first time ever, I'm like, like, but it kind of feels like different in a lot. And like, I could do this forever. And I think there's also something about like, which is a very particular experience, but like, you know, I'm, I'm a gay man and I hang out with other gay men 
and I will often be in spaces. I'm, I'm almost always the youngest person in any space I'm in. It's just, like, I think a feature of me. I think it's in part because I... I don't know. There's a lot of reasons I think I'm the youngest person in every space I'm in ever, but... Uh, it's a particularly so in gay male spaces where I'll I'll be, you know, at a gathering of gay men and I'll be like, oh, okay, I'm, like, the only person not in their 30s here, you know? You may meet, like, 38-year-old gay men that are, like, <laughs> you know, still living as boys or whatever and are still going to the same clubs and still doing the same adventures and at the same parties and you're like, wow, okay, so if I wanted to, I could could keep doing this forever. Like, I could exist in certain subcultures where my life will always kind of be like this. And there are some gay men that are going to choose to, like, never have kids and never sort of in, in a conventional sense settle down, move out to the suburbs, all that. It's like, I know I know, I don't want all those those little pieces, but it's like, I probably want some of those pieces. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's wild to see that and to be like, what if I don't ever feel ready and, you know, I... And I could just spend the next, you know, couple decades of my life just continuing to do this. But, like, I kind of want to at some point feel ready. Like, I do, I, you know, I really, I really want those next things. And I, I'm, I'm so excited to be a professor and the pressure of all that. I don't want to always spend my whole life being a PhD student. I mean, of course I don't. Like, it's all building to these things that I ultimately am very excited for. But I guess it's just like, for the first time in my life, I have that emotion that I think many people have of actually enjoying the moment that I'm in right now and being like, I'm gonna feel kind of nostalgic about this probably for the rest of my life. And I'm actually savoring this right now and I am gonna feel sad when it ends, you know? And that doesn't mean that I won't be like, really enjoying those next things for what they are. It's just like, I actually like this, you know? And I imagine that's what a lot of people felt like when they were leaving college, you know, is like they were excited to work jobs and to make real money and to be able to afford things and to not have to be staying up till 2 a.m. cramming for a final. But they miss parts of college that are uniquely college. And I think that's how I'm going to feel. And it's just like, I, I don't know. It's so weird that there were like whole parts of ways that you could experience the world and of happiness that I feel like were, cl were closed off to me for a very long time and I just didn't even know. And, you know, I just, I do worry. I'm like... Man, I'm excited. It's like each decade of my life, I can I can think about what that's going to look like. You know, in my 30s, I'm going to be moving to a new city. I'm going to be a professor working towards tenure. I'm going to, I guess, in the start of my 30s, be forming a new gay friend group in a, in a new place. And then I'm eventually going to be having kids. And then in my 40s, I'm going to be starting to hit the prime of my academic career. And I imagine that, like, you know, my spouse and I are going to be doing all these cute dinner parties and we're going to have friends that are other gay dads. And I'm going to be, you know, going to all my kids' events. And it's just like I can I can envision every step of the way. Like, I'm even, I'm even excited for, like, you know, my 60s and my 70s, my 80s. Like, I'm excited for every step of it, you know? Like, I, like, recently I've been like, oh, man, maybe I would be one of those people, like, I would, you know, when I'm older, older, like... I could live in a sort of gay retirement area and just, like, hang out with older guys and maybe I will, uh, you know, be an emeritus professor and giving random talks when I'm 80 and just, like, I'm, I'm excited for even the parts of life that I think most people are not excited to be 80. I'm excited for all that. And yet I just, I just worry that it's just gonna breeze by me, you know, like, and that it will all feel, like, too quick. <laughs> and so it's like, yeah, I, I guess the, the two big worries I have with aging now are, like, that I won't be ready for the next steps when they are to come, and that I won't, like, I'll, I, I'll be sad to leave the step I'm in, and also that the whole thing overall is gonna go by too quick. Because now that it's like, everything's come together, it just feels like, oh my god, I just didn't know time could pass like this, you know? <laughs> yeah, and it's funny because I'm really self-aware as I'm filming this, that like, I know that, that the people who watch my channel, I know I have a bunch of you know, teenagers, high schoolers, okay, I'm not, I'm not insecure about you guys listening to this. I do know on the other side that I have lots of people who are older than me um, that listen to me and that will, like, in part, you know, take advice from me or, like, that really like hearing my perspective. Like, I've gotten comments from people who are in their 50s that are like, wow, like, you know, you're 25, but the way that you've processed this is really interesting and valuable to me even in my 50s. And I know <laughs> that everything I'm saying right now sounds really like a 25-year-old person. <laughs> And you know what? It's like I am. And I think that, you know, I've I've been through the ringer of therapy and self-reflection to the point where I do have a lot of very valuable advice to give about gender and things, but there are, you know, you can't you can't work your way out of being a 25-year-old at the end of the day. And I I feel grateful to have this be the thing that I'm thinking about, and I know that 
I know that it's pretty youthful. And I think I do take comfort in the fact that I assume that it's something that I'm sort of naturally going to age out of. That, like, <laughs> that my fears around getting older, it's just like, I will get older and it's going to be good and I'm going to enjoy it. And honestly, like, I remember, you know, it's like the, the first two years of grad school, you do classes and then the remaining four, you do research. And I remember, like, feeling like, loving the class part and that was so unique and so special and the camaraderie of working on problem sets with my peers and then feeling sad when that wrapped up and feeling like it was all special and now I don't like wish I was back there I just think of it as a special time that's of my life that's over and I'm sure that's how it's going to keep on feeling you know even even though I have the fear it's like eventually the next stage of my life is going to wrap up and I'll be like that was great I'm I'm sad it's gone, but I'm excited about the current thing. And so so I know there's something a little naive about all this, but you know, it's where I'm at. Yeah, and I think that like when I started this channel, I thought that I was going to be using it in part as a way to document my life and to kind of give these journal style reflections. And that's definitely a good chunk of my content still, for sure. But I also I think became more popular than I expected. And so of course, you know, with that there's been, you know, more videos that are like me offering advice and that sort of thing. And I know that this video is more a for me video <laughs> than a for you video, though I hope that some people will have, you know, that it'll be interesting to you at least. But it really is where I'm at right now, is this feeling of like joy that is almost all consuming and then kind of fear that comes with that. I, there have been a lot of tools that were really, really useful to me um, as I've been getting to this place, like therapy and journaling every day. And both of those things I've actually stopped, which has been scary steps for me as well. Like my therapist, I literally graduated therapy where she was like, I don't think you need to be doing this anymore because like you fixed what you needed to be working on. And I kind of thought I was going to do therapy until I died. <laughs> and she was like, but like, what are your goals in therapy? And I, and I realized that I, you know, it's like an hour a week that I should probably free up. And that was 100% the right move. Like I've been out of therapy now for like um, nine months or something maybe a year? I don't actually, again, passage of time, very confusing to me. Uh, no, over a year. I've been out of therapy for over a year. Um, yeah, so done with therapy. And then similarly, I used to journal every single day, but I realized that I was, I was not doing it anymore for the purpose of reflection. I was doing it for sort of this compulsive, like, I have to document what my life is like. And, and so I moved on from those things, but there's still this feeling of like, I want to you know, work through the feelings that are important to me in a way that feels productive and healthy to me and document where my life is at because it's fun to look back on. And so I think some of that energy I have shifted into into my videos. Um, and so that's part of why I wanted to film this video is to like have this this encapsulated moment that I can look back on and be like, wow, I was so silly when I was 20, 20, when I was 25. But this is this is really where I'm at at the, you know, at age 25, at the start of 2024, like, this is, this is me right now. And it's a pretty good place to be, and it's a place that I never expected. Um, but it's also just, I don't know, it's, it's, it's intense. It's, it's interesting because I like don't, I don't cry because of testosterone in general, but I sporadically just will have it be that I will tear up thinking about how, like, how special my life feels now compared to before and how like, <laughs> yeah, I just, I really like wish this for everyone and I, I can't believe that I, yeah, I spent like a long time yearning for something and then to finally get it and to feel really stable in it is just like a really amazing feeling, even if sometimes it feels overwhelming.